You're right, man of God. Mm, you don't have affection. Anybody that look at you, you're a beautiful lady, beautiful woman. They want to marry you, but you don't have affection. They will marry you after getting to realize that uh, you, your affection is dead. That is the challenge you are facing. Yes, man of God. You're very, very correct. Huh? Very, very correct. Very, very right. Realidad. Eres un hombre y tu afecto está muerto. Hallelujah. We have just watched uh, the clips of the prophetic message that was given by the man of God, Prophet TV Joshua, to the lady that is standing right now before us. So, madam, you're welcome. Tell us your name, introduce the person that is standing before, uh, beside you, and tell us about the prophecy that you received from the man of God. My name is Ifomo Obima, and this is my lovely husband. Um, what man of God said is very, very correct. The problem actually started from when I got married. I married at a very tender age, and um, a little virgin girl. So on that very night, it wasn't easy for me. So I had to, I cried all through, and when my mother-in-law noticed what was happening, she called me by the side, cuddled me, and she had to, you know, mix up some things and help me, you know, that would help me to go easy. So, but it didn't end there. From that very moment, I developed phob uh, phobia with anything that had to do with, you know, sex, being with a man, because after that day, we tried several times, but I just couldn't give in. Everything is, you know, totally lost, completely out. Anything I had to do with intercourse or staying of married as a couple, I don't really. And it kept on going on and on and on and on. It kept on affecting me so much years after marriage. In fact, we were just existing. I must say, because I'll always want to be out of the house. I'll always want to make a trip. At times, I'll use it against him. I'll say, uh, maybe if I, when I come back from London, we'll continue, and I will go. At the time, I said two years, I came back again. I said, okay, I will have to get to South Africa. I went, I said five years, I will come back again. You see, so I was just, and it's not just on my husband. It's equally to men, other men, because I tend to be so aggressive with people. They will see me, they will like me, they will always, there's not where I'll be moving under. I will not see like five or three staring at me. But at times if they say too much, I'll ask you what for. You get it? So it was really affecting me. And uh, at a time, uh, it, you know, it gets to affect my business so bad. Because for you to even make it, a male counterpart had to come in. But I'm always aggressive to them. And uh, I love, you know, I forget about marriage. I just, I decided to go into business. I was just married to my business, married to everything that I'm doing to make it. It's not as if I'm building house or anything. But, you know, I saw that business as a way to move away, as a way to stay out, as a way not to have any form of, uh, you know, it's just the affection was totally lost then. Okay. Um, just as the man of God prophesied that affection was dead in the marriage, how did it affect the fruitfulness in the marriage? Um, in that, we stayed a very long while before we conceived. On my very first conception, and that is the only one now, God blessed me so much. Even we have already started watching Emmanuel TV because that is what we attend at uh, South Africa. So, on the very day of conception, you know, being that I'm always pushing my husband away, and he's always begging, you know, he will, also, he will say, Mommy, come now. I'll say, no, 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 not this night, please. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know, I will be like, I'm tired. I'm just coming back. I'm this. But that very night, I have, you know, stayed very long, you know, without even giving me him anything. And I said, okay, let me do it. And even when he came, I was like, do this thing first, let me go. So, when I now conceived, I was already months after the conception, before I could get to know that I'm pregnant. Because I didn't even know that that little one can get me pregnant. And as God will have it, uh, I, uh, uh, I delivered a twin, a boy and a girl. And now... <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> and now, uh, even before I came here, I was hoping on another kind of prophecy. So when man of God told me that, I said, oh, I, that this is the root of my problem. And indeed, it was the root of my problem. Because after loneliness has come in, boredom, he will ask me out. Let's go out. Let's do this. I'll say no. I don't go anywhere to see me. I'll just stay in dumb. If I'm not in that business line or fetching one money or the other, it's not even as if I'm making much. But I just want to go out. I just don't want to be anywhere around anybody that will be, you know, flourishing around me. That is just it. So after that, so now, after seeing my bundles of joy, I now want to conceive again. So, and I don't know how to start going about it. <laughs> The problem was, is still there. So, so, the, you mean, so you mean immediately man of God gave that prophecy? You just saw it as a channel of hope. You know, when you're not, when what you're not expecting was thrown to you. Mm. Oh my God, I was so overwhelmed mm. because I, know, I was like, ah. you know, it's, it's as if someone somewhere knew you and tell man of God this is her, her problem. I was so. In fact, you can't, you can't even imagine that type of feeling that I had inside me. So the problem affected your marriage to the extent that after that first child, you tried to conceive again. But because, of, because of that lack of affection, you could not go ahead. I still couldn't go ahead. Even, you, even the period that is, my, that is supposed to be, you know, the meeting period, I'll say, okay, this night I will try. I'll prepare myself. When the time comes now, I'll still push him away. Hmm. But immediately, man of God gave that prophecy. Can you tell us what God did in your life? You know, when man of God gave me the prophecy, and after, I became so light. That very day, I became so free. Hmm. You know, so free, so, I, in fact, should I even say empty? So light, I knew it very well. I knew it very well that something left me. So now, before you go ahead to tell us how you now feel towards your husband, Let's just ask one or two questions from your husband because we know you have an experience to share with people of the world concerning that prophetic message. So can we just quickly hear a word or two from your husband? Sir, you're very much welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. You're very much welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. So can you tell us your name? My name is Mr. Isaac Obima. And we know you also like to introduce the person standing beside you. Oh, she's my lovely wife. Your lovely wife, hallelujah. <laughs> so you just uh, watched the clip and you had a prophecy that was given to your wife concerning your marriage. So what do you have to say in confirmation of that word of prophecy? Uh, actually, when she came back home that same Sunday, she told me the prophecy. And uh, I know already what the problem was. And uh, I've been keen because uh, for one reason or another, I couldn't watch the telling that same Sunday. But fortunately today, I've been able to capture one, the exact prophecy which was exactly the problem we've been having. And uh, I'm here today to testify to say that that prophecy is 100 plus correct. I just want to ask you briefly, as a husband, how did that problem of lack of affection, how did it affect you as a man? Well, uh, what it causes for, what it calls for is Patience, just patience, and talk to God. He will always resolve all issues. While all this was going on, I knew that one day the end must come. And here we are today. Thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We, we, we thank God. Okay, can we just hear again from your wife? So, madam. With what, after that prophetic message, you saw how man of God delivered in the power of the Holy Ghost. So now looking at your husband, how do you now feel towards your husband? <laughs> I feel wonderful. So good. Even when I met him, I, I was like, in fact, he's the one doing shakara for me now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus for the restoration of this marriage. Ah, we thank God Almighty. So go on and tell us. When uh, at a particular time I went to him, I laid my hand on him, I wanted to lie. He was like, hey, what is going on? 
so I was really surprised after many years of lack of affection in the because marriage. Because I don't really allow it. Mm. I will just be, you know, I don't just... I don't know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> we thank God for this wonderful restoration of this marriage. So what advice do you want to give to the world concerning what God has done in your life through the power of prophecy? Okay. Um, I'll use my own case, for example. You know, this particular thing has destroyed lots of marriages, many homes. I was just so fortunate to have this kind of a man. Because it's not every man that can stand... With that, I know what I'm saying because I'm the one that, you know, that does all the hard work inside. You know, it's not, all the, it's not every man that you can just starve like that. Let me just put it in that way or in that form. Or leave the man for a long while. You, you, you are abroad, he's there. Even when he comes visiting over there, he will, at times, there was a particular time he came this is we didn't even do anything. So it was like, why did I even come here at all in the first place? So, my advice to people like that is seek the face of God. Something is actually wrong somewhere. Some, there's something that has to do with it. Because in my own case, I, I said I developed phobia. But uh, should it be phobia, should it be any other thing? It's left for the man of God. And as soon as I got delivered, I got myself back. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together once again for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, let us hear from your husband its own advice to people of the world. What do you want to say to them all? <laughs> Your advice. Yes. Okay, my advice. One, it's not the best to wish to any man, but when it comes your way, rest your hope on God. As simple as that. Hallelujah. We give glory to God Almighty for this wonderful 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 blessing he has granted unto this family i want to advise you that now that god almighty has done this wonderful thing continue me to make his word a standard for your life and for your marriage i will know more and more blessings are on the way hallelujah hallelujah we give glory to god almighty let us put hands together once again for our lord and savior jesus christ leur témoignage et à la suite de la prophétie de l'homme de Dieu, le prophète Tibi Joshua, qui a dit à la femme en particulier qu'elle euh, souffrait d'affection, elle n'avait plus d'affection pour son mari et qu'elle était comme un homme. Elle confirme que cela est vrai, était vrai. Et elle dit que, euh, en tant que mari et femme, elle a développé une véritable phobie à l'idée de connaître son mari intimement et une phobie contre les hommes en général. Elle dit à cause de ce problème, elle était toujours en voyage d'affaires hors du pays, hors de la maison, pour être loin des demandes répétées de son mari en venant à la synagogue église de toutes les nations. Et à la suite de la prophétie de l'homme de Dieu dans sa vie, elle dit qu'elle s'est sentie instantanément plus légère et elle était libre. Le mari dit qu'il savait que pendant toutes les difficultés qu'il traversait, elle savait que toute chose avait une fin. Et c'est ainsi qu'il croyait que, que Dieu allait intervenir dans la vie de son couple. Aujourd'hui, tous deux, ils rendent gloire à Dieu pour cette restauration dans leur vie et ils conseillent à tous de faire confiance à Dieu. Escuchamos este maravilloso testimonio de, profe de confirmación de profecía. Esta mujer que está aquí, se ella recibió profecía la semana pasada de parte del profeta T.B. Joshua, en la que él le dijo que ella era un hombre y que el, el afecto en su matrimonio estaba muerto. El día de hoy ella está aquí confirmando esa profecía junto a su esposo y nos cuenta que durante muchos años tuvieron problemas en su matrimonio debido a que un espíritu estaba atormentando su vida. Ella nos cuenta que por mucho tiempo ella estuvo, su matrimonio estaba enfocado en sus negocios. Ella no quería saber nada de los hombres y no, quería ni, no tenía ningún interés en establecer su relación y sanar su relación con su esposo. Ella nos cuenta que desde que el hombre de Dios le dio esta profecía, ella sintió una liberación y desde entonces su matrimonio ha estado restaurado y ha llegado a la restauración que tanto tiempo habían esperado. Ellos visitaron la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones la semana pasada y desde entonces su vida ha cambiado completamente. Le damos la gloria a Dios por este maravilloso testimonio.
worship him. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. You unraveled me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. and you say I'm no longer a slave to feel hey what you are I am a child of God are you sure say one more time I'm no longer a slave to feel make a declaration you say I am a child of God one more time lift your voice and say I'm no Happy Easter. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. The, the Spirit of God said we should release you as 
early as possible so that you can go and celebrate at home. Hallelujah. Wow, I want to bless you for the wonderful message you received today about the Easter. What a wonderful message. Uh, hallelujah. Well, we shall continue towards the end. And uh, I will not be able to deliver the message I have for you today. But I want to release you so that you can go home and, and cele celebrate. You have tomorrow again, Monday, Easter. Wow. Once again, happy Easter. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, I, we have one or two testimony. Let's listen to them before we continue our message. Our, our message. Next meeting, we shall talk about the impact of Easter, Sunday and Monday. The impact. So I, I know the Lord will give us. Uh, the grace and the viewers all over the world you know you are celebrating there and uh, don't forget the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ don't forget the important it's a joy for his friends joy for his friend comfort for his friend and you are one of his friends joy good news hallelujah good news because it brings back to life peace comfort and joy which we are enjoying today uh, yes let's listen to the testimony before we continue please You have on the you have on the table the message last week, a visit with God. So make sure you have your copy. Your husband is still looking for you. Believe you will come back. So what is the cause? You need to seek God's opinion. You can't just leave your husband. Your things are still in the house. So it's there. So please, you are here today to see the opinion. And you need to, to see man of God to counsel you, to pray for you. So your things are still in the house. Coming out from amongst the visitors at the Skoan, this woman steps forward to confirm the prophetic message spoken by Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let's hear from her. I'm the one that left my husband's house two weeks ago because I found out uh, somebody gave birth. They to him? him? Yes. Come. You know, my sister, in cases like this, you need to ask God. Because somebody told you, that somebody may be right, but still need to ask God. Because many people that they are not happy with your marriage, they will do anything to separate you people. So this is why everything, we need to ask God. We should not look at the way things look on the outside. It's bad. And take action. We still need to ask God. This is why I call you out. Thank God you are here today. This is why we are in the church. Okay, thank you.
Okay. She came to the service last, uh, I think that was her uh, first time coming to the church, Synagogue Church of Our Nation. She came to the service last Sunday, and uh, the Spirit of God located her, that uh, she has uh, left the, trying to leave the house, one leg outside, the other leg in. And the Spirit of God said, look, you can't take that kind of action. So thank God you are in the church. You need to meet the counselor. Let them counsel you the position of team. Come out. And when she came out, she was uh, given her own excuse that uh, she learned the husband had a child outside the marriage and she has to leave. That is so, wow, if that's the case, let us ask God. Let us ask God God's opinion about that. So thank God you are here today. You 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 have not gone too far. We can still ask God and uh, see what we can do. So she's here today. And uh, the husband too we we we, we send for the husband, the husband too is here. So this is just what Christianity is all about, reconciliation. Mm. Christianity is all about reconciliation. Jesus came to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man. Tell your neighbor, Jesus came to restore, restore the relationship restore. and fellowship restore. between God restore. and man. Once again, again, it's one of the reasons why he resurrected the benefits to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and you came. So you, you know, before now you had also a marriage that at, at, at brick of breaking and the, the Lord reconciled them here. After the deliverance of the, lady, the woman, the affection come, and the marriage restore. That's Christianity. There are many homes today, we say Christianity, Christianity, Christianity. The basic and the foundation is reconciliation. There can be no reconciliation without deliverance. The, there is no way you can reconcile two people without, deliver, without deliverance. If husband and wife is fighting, you, you, you cancel them, don't do that, don't do that. You are just, it's just beginning. Unless you cast out that spirit that caused that disunity. And uh, you can't just be talking to the spirit. They say, spirit, don't do this. Spirit, don't do this. No, 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 no. We, we, we are not fighting blood and flesh, but spirit being. That's a spirit. This, you evil spirit, don't do this. You evil spirit, don't do this. So, okay, come together. No. They are not blood, they are not flesh. Spirit being. It has to go through the deliverance. Through what? That deliverer would take that spirit from the dark kingdom to the light kingdom. So can I see why it has been so difficult to reconcile? When you see two brothers, two sisters, two this fight, they say they have settled it. Later on, the trouble continue. Then no, it's over. It continue. It, it will continue because Every reconciliation must pass through deliverance. 
settlement must pass through deliverance. Okay, look at this lady, our sister that, that just testified just before now. Yes, it's true. She's, she, she, she's a beautiful woman, but yet that spirit is there to make her reject the affection from her dear one. And she, she, she did not know why this continued. Not until after that deliverance, she realized that, look, this is bad. You will not know what you are doing until you are delivered. You will never agree that what you are doing is bad until you are delivered. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I, again? Yes. What you are doing, whatever you are doing, whatever bad thing you are doing, you will think that uh, you, are, you are taking your position. You have to, as a, as a human being, you have to, you have to stand you have to stand to defend yourself. You say, I'm defending myself. He insult me and I insult her. I'm defending myself. I, I, I'm, I'm right. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm right. And the two wrong cannot make a right. Two wrong cannot make a right. He slapped me and I slapped her back. So we are the same. Whereas she slapped me, and I'm right if I'm not slap her bar. The judgment said, I'm right if I'm not do that bar. She slapped me for no reason. I decided not to. I'm right. But if she slapped me, and I slap her bar, that is too wrong. And that too wrong cannot make it right. Can you see the position we find ourselves, we Christian? We find ourselves, our faith find in self without alternative. There is no alternative for our faith. We just have to. He slap you, he abuse you, he curse you without reason. And you be return cursing him back. I did see him back. That is too wrong. So let's listen to our sister here. The, so, some of the benefit of resurrection. He, he came. Yes. Uh, My name is Mrs. Timmy Zopimfa. My name is Mrs. Timmy Zopimfa. I'm from Bielsa State. Last Sunday, I was here in service. I was looking depressed and suicidal when the man of God gave a prophecy that there's a lady here who ran away from my matrimonial home for over two weeks now and her belongings are still in the house. And I confirmed the prophecy to be true. I've been married for the past 13 years now and I have been childless since then. I have been moving from one place to the other, looking for solution, but to no avail. I've been going to clinics, churches, spiritual home for solutions, until February, no, I've been looking for solutions all over the place, but to no avail. I have been the only one moving to clinic, going to clinics for treatment, for checkup. My husband has refused to join me, not until I found out in 2013 that he has a low sperm count. I begged him to go for treatment. He said there's nothing wrong with him, that he's all right. Until February this year, I got to find out that somebody just, a girl, a lady just gave birth for him. And when I confronted, confronted him, he denied that first and later accepted. 
I was so devastated. I was shocked. I was bleeding from my heart. So I ran away from the house. I went to my mother's place in River State. He kept calling me. I refused to pick the call. He called my mother to talk to me to come back. The pressure was too much for my mother, so I ran away from my mother's place again. I went to a friend's place. I was there until... I was so depressed, I don't know what to do. I thought of killing myself. I thought of grabbing into the river to drown myself or drinking something. I hope you people listen to that. You know, she's crying, saying it. She, she, she meant what is... She met it then. She met it then. At least ninety percent of suicide, whatever you call it, as a result of this. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. But he kept begging and begging until one day when I was sleeping, I saw Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. He was delivering people and he got to me. My, sh my chest was so heavy, he now placed his hand on my chest and I just let go of myself in the dream. And then he removed his hand and he was staring at me when I disconnected. So when I told a friend, she said I really need to come to synagogue. That was how I find myself here. You listen to that? It's a, in the processing of thinking of how to commit suicide, and he put this, put this, put this, he was very close to that. And she was ready to commit suicide. Suddenly, one night, she slept, and she drank, and she found herself here, and she was delivered in that dream. When she was delivered, she realized that uh, her heavenly trouble, she, she became so light. Ah. The thought of this dada gone. She started looking for ah, a friend to, to, to discuss the issue with. She was very lucky. She, she met a good friend. Oh my God. She met a good friend. Because everyone lies to his neighbor. It is it is friend that turned you to this. What you have been going through for long as a sort of your friends cancelling. If I'm talking. Mm -hmm. It's a friend. So a friend say, Oh, this dream, you need to go to the church. Go there. For the fulfillment. Me, you need deliverance. So suddenly she came last Sunday. And uh, while we are moving on, we met her. And look, you, you, you listen to the prophetic word that was given. Okay, let's. Uh -huh. After the prophecy, now sent for my husband. And I believe he's here now. You believe he's there now? Okay. Okay, we believe you are here now, husband. Can you, can you see this to Mary there to Marsh? Look at it. Satan, you are a liar. Yeah. Can you see? I'm, we are talking on the outside now. We have not gone into the inside. On the outside to Marsh, look at the two personalities that stand. So let's listen to the husband. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is... Mr. Zogmufai Nebrae Peter, I hail from Bielsa State. I came in honor of the call from the man of God, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua, and uh, to confirm the prophecy he gave concerning my marriage, my family, to be absolutely 100% true. So, how we came about your phone number after the prophetic word to your wife? 
and their wife explain our own side and we have to pray and ask God whether we need to call you if you don't need to call you we just have to cancel the wife and deliver the wife to proceed to proceed her life to continue her life and uh, the Lord will do the right thing then but after the prayer God said look we have to ask for the number for the old lady we asked this woman to come and give us your no the number of the, this man after some time they say no you have to you we know you are not interested in the marriage but give us this number so we want to meet this man so she cannot say no she has to she, she brought it she brought it out and then we call you we want to see you so this is how we came about your number and your, and your phone number we are sorry i hope you thank you for honor this calling thank you I have been married to my wife for the past 13 years. We got married in 2003. Before our marriage, we dated for close to 10 years. And uh, during this period, uh, she had been getting pregnant. But uh, because of the kind of, kind of family she hailed from, most times uh, she, she abort the pregnancy without sometime my direct uh, uh, approval. Now, when we got married, she also used to get pregnant, but surprisingly, at a certain point in time, maybe when the pregnancy gets to about uh, two, three months, getting to four months, we do lose the pregnancy. And uh, the reasons behind this, we cannot really tell. But I, as a person, I thought it is more of a spiritual than medical. So, at a certain point in time,